Hello, everyone, and welcome to Xeno Nation, episode 47. I'm going to call it Xeno 2 Nation tonight. Uh, this is going to be a special episode tonight. Uh, last week, many of us in the community received our Xeno 2s and uh, we got to fly them for the first time. So there's a lot of... Uh, you know, stuff to talk about tonight, a lot of issues, a lot of questions, uh, you know, we're going to get into it all. Um, we got a special guest going to pop in at one point and help us out with uh, a little bit of a landing issue he had with the Xeno 2. So um, I want to pass this over to my esteemed uh, partner in crime here, Marcus Crawford. He's going to fill you in on what's going on in his uh, Xeno 2 world. Well, uh, thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. I actually, uh, Got to take the Xeno out again this afternoon and fly it around. And it was mostly just a test flight, trying some of the landings, precision landing. I'm going to tell you, I wouldn't count on the Xeno too much for precision landing. Uh, but I had a good time. And let me tell you, if you saw my earlier video where I had some problems with the gimbal while in sport mode, uh, I am going to attribute that to uh, that the, the, we had some crosswinds out there in the canyon. I flew it today, and holy mackerel, I put it in sport mode. That thing hauls the mail, man. It really goes, and the gimbal was just fine. So so good news there. Good to know. Good to know, Marcus. And, of course, we have our special contributor to the show on here, our resident DJI expert, but we're starting to convert him over to being a uh, – uh, Hubson Zeno expert too. Bill, how are you tonight, and and what's new in your world? I am I I, I am doing well. I am still on the uh, yet to be yet to be uh, Zeno two list. Uh, it, Hubson is is must be shipping it um, around the world the other way to me because it hasn't gotten here yet. So I'm I'm, I'm anxiously awaiting that. And while I'm anxiously awaiting it. I've taken the Xeno one up for some flights and um, you know, I've, I'm, I'm getting indoctrinated to it. Let me put it to you that way. And, you know, I've learned some lessons already and fortunately they have not been painful lessons, except I had to replace some props. So other than that, that that's all been good. And I've been living vicariously through both of your videos, through all your videos, both of you guys, you've done excellent work. It's great to see how that drone handles the wind. I am very impressed with that. So I can hardly wait to get mine. I am really looking forward to it. And Hubson is too, because they won't be getting a deluge of emails from me every day. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, Bill, don't knock that original Xeno. You, that thing is going to be, I'm telling you, you're going to fly that and you're going to get to know and love it. I guarantee you. Oh, I, I am. I absolutely am. And the one thing that I've learned already is you need, you need the wide open spaces to fly a Xeno. Uh, that I have learned, okay? <laughs> yeah, um, what, what we're you know we're going to dive into that in a little bit uh, in a while here um, about the um, the takeoffs and 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 the landings, well, especially the takeoffs. We're going to bring a special guest on, but um, to, to Bill's point is um, a lot of people, um, well, not a lot of people, some people uh, receive their Zeta two. It's their first non DJI drone. And, uh, you know, DJI drones are, you know, famous for, um, you know, of course, precision landings. But they also have precision takeoffs, too, where they go kind of straight up, staying right where they should be. And then they, they push out when you hit stick. But um, the Zeno 2 is a whole different experience. And, and I you know, I don't I hate to start off with the negative first because there's so many positives about the Zeno 2. And I'm going to talk about all the positives. But one of the negatives is... The issue that got most people concerned with the Xeno One, the Hubson drop, which could more or less be the Hubson, you know, move all over the place, is present again here with um, the Xeno Two. And Marcus, I even have a theory why that may be, but I won't say it quite yet. I'm going to throw it over to Marcus for his thoughts on how the Xeno Two performs on takeoff and we'll say landings also. Yeah, well, so if everybody, you saw my original, uh, my first flight that I did out at the canyon with it, you know, it was not the most stable. Now, that was on the previous firmware. Also, it was very windy, and it was wind gusts and those kind of things. So taking that into consideration, uh, but it still was not what I hoped it would be. Now, when I first went out there, I had uh, I had a compass calibration issue. It was started toilet bowling. So I brought it down 
did a calibration, took off again, and it was more stable on my second takeoff. And, and let me add that uh, I typically do not do a compass calibration unless the drone asks for it, and it did not. Uh, but it was very evident in that case that it needed one. Uh, so, you know, that was a little bit of an auspicious start as far as stability. Uh, and I even noticed when it was doing, I had it doing a, an orbit, and I watched it uh, drop in altitude even while it was doing an orbit, so which was kind of kind of odd. If you go back and look at the telemetry on that video, you'll watch the thing uh, drop in altitude. So that's kind of kind of weird. But like I said, there were uh, there was a lot of wind out there, and it was gusty wind. And coming out of that canyon, you know, it can you can get updrafts and all kinds of weird things. So not throwing it under the bus in any way. Uh, Today, I took it out, and I did that newest uh, update, which is I think is 1.1.19. Uh, is that correct, Ron? I believe that's the one. Yeah, 1.1.9 one, one, one dot, one dot or whatever. It was Well, it was the latest. It, I saw. I got it Saturday night. I didn't get an update yesterday, but I didn't I didn't never turn the drone on today. So if there's a new update today, I did not uh, turn the drone on. But 1.1.9. One, one, one yeah, one, I just looked nine. here at my phone, Ron, and that is it. It's 1.1.9. So uh, that, that, that's the, the, the latest uh, update. And it indeed, when I took off today, was, it was far more stable. Now, there was no, not much wind either. I was just out at the park. So oh, hopefully it would be more stable. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, that, that is not knocking this drone. I mean, I, I threw it into a high gear tonight, put it into sport mode. And holy cow, it's like flying a sports car, man. It really hauls the mail, and it the uh, it, it it flies better. I'm going to say that I don't know if it you can attribute it to the controller or the drone or the flight control software or whatever, but it does. There's no question. It's far more precise than the original Zeno and and flies a, a lot better. I'm telling you, I'm excited about this drone, guys. I'm I'm having a blast with it, and I know you are too, Ron. And I know. Bill, uh, uh, you'll you'll be getting yours and and uh, be doing the same thing. You know, one of the things I got to say from both of yours, I, I got to say this: the video from both of yours, it, it's just it, it's like you don't even have to really put it in post. I mean, you know, if you want to do color correction, but it's sharp, it's clear. Um, you know, horizon looks good on it. I mean, it's just it's just very sharp, clear good video i mean it's like it's it's to me it's the kind of quality i would expect of getting off a dji product i was I, i'm that impressed with it and with mine the other day now granted you know I, I was shooting 4k 30 the other day i got some props in the shot which i'm like yeah but other than that you know i'm pretty impressed with the video from the xeno one but your guys is the, the the video on it, it it's 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 stellar I, I can't say enough about it uh, Bill, you're right there. At you know, as good as the 4K coming off the Zeno One again for a budget quad was was basically a groundbreaker. No budget quad ever had that type of uh, video before. Uh, the Zeno uh, Two is uh, a, a, a big step up in video quality. Um, and and I'll jump right to uh, kind of jump around here. The picture quality, the JPEGs off of it look really good. I mean. Uh, Almost like you know, on par with your with your cell phone. Uh, for the Xeno One, the, the JPEGs were unimpressive. I tried the uh, the DNG format, which is kind of a raw format that the Xeno Two offers. But I found that uh, man, talk about. I mean, they were real raw. I put them in a you know like a, a good editor, and I was you know, I, I mean the um, what do you call it the um, uh, the white balance is way off. Anyhow, it took me a lot of work to get them to. What I what I what I want them to look like, and it's still the JPEG look better. So I just turned DNG off. Maybe that's something they could work on in a in a, in a future update. But uh, no, the, uh, the the video is sharp. You can see fine detail in it, and uh, surprisingly, the issues that some of the early reviewers had, like your um, you know uh, um, uh, Blue Skyver and um, L3 Toys and uh, Chris, the QC guy, a lot of them had issues with this uh, kind of a lens flare. And uh, I, I haven't seen it in mine yet. And I've flown three times, once in partly cloudy, once in extremely cloudy, and once in sunny. And, and I haven't got it yet. And uh, also I've noticed kind of a 
overexposed sky in a lot of the early viewers' videos. And I don't kind of get that either. So I don't know if they've gone back and recoded the lens for the, the, the more recent models or if, if a software update has corrected this problem. Marcus, have you noticed any of the early issues that the you know the early reviewers have with the lens flare? And, and I, I did, and I have not seen any of that either, Ron. You know, I got a question for you, though, Ron. One of the things I noticed today uh, when I first booted up the drone and I was getting ready to start video... I went in to check my settings. I had been shooting in 4K 60, and I had the white balance set to sunny day. Mm -hmm. And then when I looked in there, white the fork it was back on 4K 30, and the white balance was set to automatic. Now, to be fair, I had updated the firmware as well, so maybe it went back to the defaults when I did the it, firmware update. It, it, it did, Marcus, because. Um like mine, when I updated the firmware on the fly before my flight on Saturday, it turned like, you know, I had changed it to Imperial and it changed it back to metric. So basically when you do a firmware update, you go back to factory settings. There you go. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 So, and um, I was going to throw in another tidbit too. I found it. I, I mean, this is just, again, opinion so far. I haven't tested deeply, but the very first time I flew it, I flew it in auto. And then at some point, I, I started messing with the exposure settings. And the video that I messed with the settings, it looked kind of all muddy, like uh, uh, like I messed it up by doing it. And that was a characteristic of the Xeno 1 in the early days. Once it gave you those, like, color and, and exposure stuff, if you mess with them, you made the video look worse. And it, this seems to be the issue again um, with the Xeno 2 now, of course. I didn't. I, I didn't do it since I upgraded to the latest firmware, so maybe that fixed that issue too. But um, for right now, it seems to just leave it on auto, except for white balance. Changing the white balance did not seem to degrade the video at all. Um, so I got a question for both of you. Go go right ahead, Bill. All right, what what? How's your runtime been? How's the battery life been with the Zeno Two? Marcus, go ahead. Well, so I have to tell you, Bill. In both situations, I had. Uh, on that battery, updated my firmware, and uh, I did like a full calibration, gimbal, uh, 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 gyro, and uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, magnetic calibration. So all of that on the battery, right? So, but even at that, it seemed like I, man, I got at least 20, 25 minutes. I mean, I think it's, I think the battery life is going to be tremendous on this drone. Awesome. And you know me, I'm heavy with my uh, with my thumb, so I'm at full throttle much of the time. Ron, how uh, was yours? Yeah, um, I you know I was I looked down the chat. What was it? What, I sound like a politician? Uh, no, it? the battery what? life. Battery life. Sorry, I looked down the chat like a politician. I got to re ask the question again. Um, battery life. I, I'm going to say I, I between all three flights, I'm going to say I'm getting an average of about 22 minutes in the air, but I'm I'm stopping it like. Uh, I've landed by 25%. So if you if I wanted to push it down to 20 or 15%, I'm sure I could get almost up to 25 minutes if I really pushed it hard. But but landing it like when it says to land it, you, you know, I'm getting about 22 minutes of flight, which seems to be a good five minutes more than the uh, Zeno 1 at its best. And plus, I mean, I'm pushing it a lot harder than the Zeno. I mean, Bill, I, I'm doing a lot of sport mode on these flights too. So if you, if you flew at... Um, what do you call it? What's the normal mode called, Marcus? Does it have standard mode, normal mode? What's it called? I think it just called normal mode. It says if you, on the thing. Yeah. If you flew a normal mode, you know, 90, 99.5% of your flight, I'm sure you could knock a few more minutes out. But I mean, I've, I've been flying in wind and just tested. So I've been flying a lot of sport mode. And now, what I will tell you, Bill, is um, what it doesn't have that the Xeno One done has you can't customize your your settings as far as like you know your y'all and uh you know you're up and you're down i don't know what they call that the things but i mean but what this does have in it that the xeno one did not have it has a working sport mode button and also there's a film mode button in there but bill that needs to be adjusted the film mode bo mode is so darn slow it it it's almost useless except if i guess there's a tripod mode you just want to take pictures but that's I mean, it, ron i think it's more like tripod mode i totally agree hey ron you just made me think of something too when you were talking about the menus i too was in there looking where if you could adjust the yaw 
and I couldn't find it either. I thought maybe I just missed it. Uh, but also, I found the where you can change that function button, and I changed it to the uh, the the gimbal. What I'm trying to remember what it says: gimbal stability or something like that, or gimbal return. Well, I was thinking I I I, I put it on that, and I and I was I, I don't know why, but I never tried it. But I think what that does is like on a DJI drone or even like the Femi X8 uh, SE, you can push that button and it'll drop the gimbal down 90 degrees. Then if you push it again, it'll pick it up to the uh, to the normal, which which is handy to have. That's a handy little feature. Yeah, I I, I know the function button's there, but I haven't got around to um, you know mess with it. Hey, Chad B just left a comment. You can adjust the y'all. It, it's the heading section, and you know he. he He's exactly right. And I did see that in there and I bumped it up to like, it was set real low, like under five and I bumped it up and I, and I, you know, yeah, he, he's definitely right on that. Hey, I, thank I, you, Chad. I'll yeah. go in there and mess around with that. Yeah. But, 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 you, but, but more, my more concern, well, not more concern. That's important. Thing to, my, but uh, Chad, as is true though, you cannot adjust the, like in the Xeno one, which I don't know if he had the Xeno one, you could adjust the speed and, and the, uh, Going up and down and going back and forth. I'll say it as simple as I can. Banking. And, um, you know, because the problem with the Xeno 1, it basically was set in sport mode permanently. There was nothing but either not flying or flying at, at full breakneck speed. It was, you know, it was nothing in between. Where once they added those controls in, I'm going to say around the end of May, you could fly, you know, uh, you could basically put yourself in kind of a cinematic flight mode where you could get some better footage. Um so, yeah. So, um, anyways, um, I, I'm going to say this for me, you know, I, I, we're talking negative. I want to talk to the good stuff, though. I mean, this thing, as we talked on the pre-show, I mean, this thing has the power of, of you know, your top-end drones. I mean, uh, even normal mode, it, it goes along real good. And if you if you get some high winds, I mean, I, I flew in. Almost, I, I keep kidding. Hur hurricane like conditions, twenty eight mile per hour gusts in my first flight. I put in sport, but I, I had no problem getting back in the wind. Like if I flew downwind, I had no problems ripping right back to me, even even high winds. That, that's that's a real good point that you can trust this drone almost any place. It's going to come back to you, and it doesn't have the crabbing issues that the Xeno One has. Right. I mean, it doesn't doesn't fly as precise as a DJI drone, or you know, but but it flies pretty darn precise and um you know the cat we speak about a little bit of the camera the camera's much improved the video is crisp the jpegs are good i mean um it, it just you know it it just feels good in the air flying um uh, uh, you know now you know the weaknesses we uh, when you have a 30 feet in the air and above it's a great drone when you bring it down 30 feet or under, maybe I should say 20 feet and under, that's where it gets a little hairy. It still has the issues of the Xeno 1, the, you know, the ups and drop and all. It's, it's moving around takeoff and moving around landing both. Um, have you seen these things, Marcus? Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, boy, especially, and, and, and last week when we had uh, Kluge on, he told us the same thing. You know, he was flying it back to back with the Mavic Mini, and it kind of blew his mind uh, that, you know, he was, that the, the Xeno 2 was not nearly as stable as his Mavic Mini. And that's a fact. It is not, it is not that rock solid that we're, we've seen with some DJI drones and other drones. Now, that doesn't mean that it's bad. Uh, I, I just agree with you, Ron. It moves around more than maybe some other drones that we fly. Uh, but it, like you said, once you get it up in the air, how often are you flying that close to the ground that that's something that you're you're going to uh, worry about? Uh, Lauren is just talking about that downward sensor, so I'm glad you brought that up, Lauren. I forgot to test that again today. Uh, and and uh, uh, Blue Skyver actually got a hold of me and had a theory about that. Uh, he said that he thinks that that sensor, if you put your hand under it, that it would put it into landing mode. Now. I don't know. I didn't try that again today, but I can tell you when I tried it on my first flight, putting my hand up there under there, it didn't seem to do anything with the drone. And I know Ron, you had the same experience. Uh, and, and I believe Josh and parks and tech, Josh, if you're 
still in here. Didn't you try that as well? It didn't seem to affect what the drone did not move at all when you move your hand into those sensors. So, yeah. so I don't know what the deal is there. Yeah, I, I concur with Marcus. I put my hand under it. I don't know if I haven't done it on camera yet. And, you know, we're used to DJI drones. And when you put your hand under the sensor, they, they move up in the air. Or the Xeno yeah, 2. You guys see what John of Drones put in there? It looks to me, Ron Marcus videos, that the downward sensor has not been activated by the firmware. If it was working, it should stay in place. I completely agree with I completely uh, agree. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, and and I, I get to I on, on a video I haven't posted yet. I took a towel, like a towel, a straight beach towel, and I waved it under it, like real big under the thing, and it didn't move at all, except for its you know, its usual sideways meandering or whatever. So it didn't even see a, a you know like a six foot blue straight towel, or whatever. So I yeah, um, let's hope that they're connected physically. Uh, and but but yeah, but 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 John and Jones is completely right. Uh, D, D, I mean, DGI, um, Hubson hasn't, you know, software wise, they haven't, you know, they're not using them for anything yet. It's like having a part in a car that doesn't do anything so far. So let's hope that, um, you know, let's all go over to the official Hubson, you know, uh, Facebook page and, uh, very nicely, you know, uh, make comments about, you know, Hey, your downward sensors don't seem to be doing anything. What's yet. with uh, those sensors? Yeah. <laughs> and 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 make sure that they get the software uh those software engineers busy um writing code to um to get that. i mean bill i mean that that's i mean have you ever heard anything like this for a drone has a downward ha any kind of senses on but yet the uh, software doesn't use them that's that's just too funny I mean, I mean you know it's like every dji product it's always worked it's never i mean well the Mavic 2, the, it didn't, precision landing wasn't enabled, but, you know, the sensors on the bottom of the drone always work. There was never a problem with it. So that's kind of, well, and again, okay, and I'll say this, all right, it's a $399 drone, okay? So, you know, we're, we're getting a lot, of, and that's not to belittle the amount of tech that we're getting in there, okay? It's just, you know, for the price point, we're getting some, qual we're getting some great quality, as both of you attested to so well. You know, just, you know, it, it's just these little tweaks. Like you said, you know, when the Xeno first came out, I remember, I remember both of you very clearly, we're talking about the Hubson drop and then, you know, the camera concerns about it and the horizon and, you know, and, and it, how it's progressed over time to where it is now. And it's, and it's a good, it's a really good drone. I, so far, what I've seen video wise, I've been very impressed with it, but it took, it took some time to get to that point. We had to go through a lot of software updates to get there and i think we're probably in this mode right now with the xeno 2 that we're going to need to get those software updates done to take care of some of these things this is a real obvious one i mean it's just it's just it's just glaring it's just right out there so i expect this to be taken care of very slowly yeah hey ian fleming has a comment here he said the sensors of mine uh but I think he's beat to say the sensors of mine work but is very slowly reacted is not responsive as it should be and uh you know um yeah i mean possibly um i, I should test mine and like i don't know, inside or something like that to see uh if they work and, but but uh, you know i understand what bill's saying but uh, i'm going to throw this out to the everybody in the chat and to marcus too but when we saw that the that the xeno i was gonna call it the xeno pro the xeno 2 had these downward sensors on it i think those downward sensors are a big part of the reason that most of us ordered this drone. Am I am I off base on saying that, Marcus? No, not at all. We expected it to be more stable. At least I expected it to be more stable than it appears to be uh, now. Now that you know, like I, I agree with Bill. I, let's. I'm I'm perfectly willing to see some refinement and let him give him a chance. Alan Hazard made a good point there. He was talking about those sensors are. Uh, our, our downward, uh, uh, or time, excuse me, their time of flight sensors. Now, if, if I, and Alan, you correct me if I'm thinking about this wrong. Time of flight is uh, optical, just kind of like radar. It looks down and pings back uh, to tell it where it's at. But wouldn't that still raise the drone if you put an object underneath it? So I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert, but... Uh, but just wondering about that. And I guess maybe I misunderstood also. I did not realize that time of flight sensors were 
infrared as these appear to be. So shows what I know, huh? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, again, this back to the point where I think a lot of people were excited about this drone because of the sensors on there, and now basically we've we still have a, you know, we still have a drone without sensors in in, in a way. It seems to be. I mean, if um, you know, if what he says about them not reacting is correct, I mean, uh, you know, quickly or whatever. I mean, basically, it's not it's not what we expected. We expected, you know, sensors that would would see stuff under them and, and, and react to and keep but basically we expected the drone not to wander all over the place on launch and and we and we so far we haven't got that and you know again uh, I, i'm i'm in there with bill you know eventually you know um they'll probably be able to make better use of these sensors and you know and and i don't uh, I kind of don't, again, we're talking, there's three nine. I don't expect it to stay in there like a statue, like a DJI drone, but I also don't expect it to wander all over the place. Is, is that, am I being unfair in that statement? Not no, at all. You're, you're, you're right. I mean, you know, cause I, you know, watching your videos, I mean, about both of your landing videos, you could tell that there was, it, it, it was just, it, it was insane. Um, you know, you shouldn't have to worry. It's like, when a DJI drone lands for me, okay, it lands, and then the motors, you know, when I uh, put the sticks in, the motors cut off, okay, and I'll put the sticks in, the motors are still going here on my Xeno One, and now I hear, you know, just to hold hold the left throttle down. Well, you know, it's like, okay, are are, are you going to stop sometime here? Hello, and then on the way down, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm I'm telling you, you know, it's like I really I've. I've done I've done a, enough flying in my backyard to know that my backyard's not an ideal place to fly the Zeno. Okay, I'm going to be going to the soccer field to fly the Zeno because it need it needs a lot of room to breathe. Okay, that's that that's my that that's my two cents for that because it's just it's you, you just you don't know like Marcus said you know it's like he would had two feet on the pad and then it was 15 feet off the pad. I mean oh, precision you, landing, Bill. Precision landing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, so I want to point out, Stephen Klein said something here about that they will never stop the drone. They will just work for low altitude and stability. So I, I we may just not be understanding how those time of flight sensors uh, work. Mm -hmm. So I, that could very well be. Yeah, but I mean, even, okay, they will never stop the drone. They'll just work for low altitude and stability, guys. Yeah, but but the, we're not getting any stability in, in any yeah. form. It's not state. It's not stable up and down. It's not stable right, left, back and forth. Uh, I see zero stability on takeoff. Yeah, I agree. The other thing, Stephen Klein is also talking here about the landing again, and he's saying it slows down and the voice says landing. It is never done that for me. I flew it again today and pulling the stick down. It did not slow down. It uh, It kept spinning the props even when it was on the landing pad and there were no voice there was no voice that said landing no voice inside your head well yeah. and momentarily we will invite some uh, you we will have a guest on the show here that heard the voices hey so i want to point out stephen klein says it does i swear and i believe you i'm not uh, don't misunderstand me i'm not saying you're steering us wrong i'm just saying that i haven't seen it and nor has ron yeah i again i i I, I, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about here. Yeah, it, oh, I, put it in layman's terms, it, it doesn't take off any better than the Zeno One did. Is that is? Am I being unfair? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. That layman's terms. Even yeah. with those sensors, it does it doesn't take off or hover or anything any better than the Zeno One did just, with just the barometer. So, yeah. uh, and that, again, I'm not trying to knock the drone at all. I mean, you know. It's just an expectation that we had that it would be more stable, but um. yeah. And Aiden Hill is asking about my, does my down sensor is it not working? I, I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, um, I, I we'll just have to test it more, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll learn more. Maybe we'll have some other people chime in that. Um, have some more knowledge of this and, and, you know, we'll get to the bottom of it. Um, so, well, no. So I also want to point out, uh, that our, our friend, uh, 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 Johnny, uh, uh, the drone flyer, he said that he got that landing notice when he was landing his today. He said, yeah, it told him landing 
and then and then came down okay. Uh, I updated the firmware today, and I didn't see that. So I, I, that's that's just it. You know, it's, you know, for when, when you land a drone like this, okay, and, and I'll say it, even for a $399 drone, I'm expecting, you know, it to come down like a drone should, okay, and not be, not, you know, doing, doing this and, and doing that, but, you know, to come down, you know, where, where I'm, where I'm guiding it down there, when I, where I'm flying it to, and when it lands on that mat and I put the sticks in that, the motor stop and just be done. And, you know, it's not doing that. And, you know, it took some mad piloting skills for both you guys, you know, and I just watched uh, Ron's w video last uh, when he was landing it on that little seawall up there. I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, it was just, you know, and you could tell Ron was really fighting it and trying to get it to land. That there he is. Yeah, we, we have a special guest here. Giant the Drone Fire has joined us tonight. And he's got some information. Johnny received his um, Zeno 2 on Friday, like I did. And he had trouble all weekend with his landings. I saw my first landing. The Zeno 2 was all over the place, um, spinning like crazy. And uh, I saw it almost flip over. And I flew in high wind. And I had to hold the left stick down an extremely long time before the motor shut off. But but Johnny had some of the same experiences landing, and, I, and he's got a solution to it now. But I kind of want him to recap his um, his his landing issues. So uh, Johnny, welcome to the show. I want everybody in the chat to welcome Johnny. He's been a long time, you know, uh, uh, super fan of ours in the chat here, and now he's uh, up on the panel here. But he's got some good information that he needs to. Uh, you know, um, give to the people out there. So, Johnny, what, what was going on with your landings this weekend? Well, hey, thank you, Ron. Thank you for being on, and uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, so when I got my Zeno Friday, of course, I, I'm excited. I charged it up uh, Friday afternoon late, and I take it up, and, of course, it lifted off great and went up and flew around, and the landing is what came next. Uh, it landed very hard, and it would not – turn the motors off so I end up pulling the stick down and it kind of like it was trying to move so it actually flipped a little bit I uh, damaged the prop so I you know I was thinking man so I did it again I kind of did the same thing and I was like man I'm gonna have to join the prop with a month club here or something <laughs> I, I've never changed a prop before you know with three DJI drones and, and this is my first uh, you know, non DJI product but uh, so I did it I think Saturday got the update uh, flew it uh, Sunday, and I did not get that landing notice, but tonight, I will say, move forward to tonight, I took it up. Uh, of course, was kind of dreading the landing still, just because of the past few uh, times I flew it, and tonight, when I went to land, it actually said landed. So, Stephen, yes, you did hear landing, and I, I'm not the only person, I was thinking I was, like, the only person to, to hear it, you know, but yes, it did say landing. It landed very softly. The engine cut off. The motors cut off and it, it, it was just like hey wow i'm loving this drone so uh and then i took it up about three more times just to test it and uh it, it landed and said landing so hey as of right now i'm, I'm very happy uh it, I, it didn't do it when i first did the update and, and uh so I'm, I'm hoping that it's good Hey, you you uh, you referring to the the the, the one point one nine firm update mark that yes, marks the one that came Saturday earlier. Saturday night yes and now I didn't it, it I didn't fly it uh well I did actually fly it Sunday and I did not get that landing but it did land softer but I still had to physically turn the, motor, the motors off but and it's definitely a long you know and I think I you know we talked a little bit pre show I did actually hand catch it one time but I, I'm not crazy about doing that it's it's a pretty hefty drone and I don't really like sticking my hand on it. And I was worried about, you know, if I pull that left stick down, is it going to jump out my hands? So, you know, I, I, you know, when it said landing, I was like, God was like so shocked. I was like, Ooh, I love this voice. that says landing. Yeah. It, yeah. The, 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 the shut the motors off. It's the longest, uh, the longest left stick pull down in drone history. Well, I was, uh, yeah, I was, I just wasn't used to it, I guess. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting, you know, you, I expected it to land softly. Hey, motors cut off and hey you go to your next flight but i was like you know uh, you know it's when it started flopping around kind of like a, a fish there for a minute i was like oh my god you know this is a quick 399 <laughs> nothing got hurt and uh it's like it kind of hurt my feelings but 
but no, I, I, I and I, you know, it's, it's, it really, I'll tell you what, you know, Bill, you thought, I mean, uh, Ron, you talking about a hurricane. I think it, I don't know if you saw my post, but it probably could outrun a hurricane. It is, it is fast. <laughs> It might not run that Corvette that uh, Marcus got there. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, that Corvette will do just fine. Yeah. Uh, we'll get that. We had to get this Tesla on you over here, but you know, but no, it, it is definitely, I tell you what, it'll get up to 45 quick in that uh, sport speed. Now the film speed, film mode is kind of, I don't really know what's going on there. That's pretty, uh, it's pretty slow. It's turtle slow. Yes, it is. Hey, we got Definitely. a comment. We got a we got a comment from Stephen Klein here. He said you need to do a, a IMU if it isn't landing correctly. It thinks it's a it's higher, so there there is your landing issues. So that that's a good point. Has that have any has anybody tried that yet, Marcus? I calibrated Marcus. everything before I uh, left today. Before I left the house today. Okay. And that first time when I got that drone down, that first time, and I calibrated everything that could be calibrated, the props. The, the landing gear, I mean, I, I was like yeah. checking everything, but uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, as of tonight, hey, it, it flew great. And I, hey, I'm just glad I wasn't the only one that heard that landing voice. Yeah, yeah, you're the one who heard the voice, you're the one who heard the voices. Yeah, Stephen Klein heard it too, he said. Yeah, he heard the voices. Yeah, so uh, hey. yeah, I, I went now. I can't wait to fly. I think I got a good day coming tomorrow. I want to hear the voices. <laughs> yeah, I hope, I well, hope I'm so. It was a comforting voice. <laughs> well, I'm definitely going to try it again too. Uh, you know, go out and uh, absolutely, I'll I'll recalibrate everything all over again. Uh, you know, I'm familiar with that. So now, Mark, now, Marcus, like one comment you did make. It did do. I think I had to set something on a, uh, from 4K or whatever. It, it, when I did the update, it changed, so I had to go back and you know, kind of set a few things. Uh, I don't know if it went back to some, you know. Uh, standard settings or something. So uh, I think everybody needs to check that. And my, my return to home height was the same, but you know, is there any way to change the control from meters to imperial, or is that not? Uh, so far, I haven't seen anybody find a way to to change it on the controller. Okay, but uh, but if anybody knows of a way of, of what what Johnny's referring to is, you could change on the app. You could change it from meter to imperial, but on the little window on the controller, it's stuck in um in meter. imperial. Yeah. Hey, a blue sky has a comment here. He says the best the behavior of shutting off the motors changed with time. Early, you could shut off the motors with both sticks. Okay. Yeah, he he mentioned something about if you kept doing it, it might rev up and flip over. So. I uh, yeah, that's that's a that's a good point. I'm just going to keep my hand on that left stick until until it's off. Yeah, I mean it may take a while, but it, it works. Yeah, Greg Pittman uh, earlier said that his flipped over on a landing. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I, I was ready to get my baseball bat just in case that thing got crazy. <laughs> <laughs> or one of the drone nets. Throw, yeah, throw a drone net a over. Good, that's a good idea. Maybe throw a crawfish net over down here. A uh, a uh, uh, Bob Bermuda Bob. Uh, he comments you should calibrate after after every update and that's that's probably a wise move bob yeah can't hurt. it can't hurt yep can't hurt you definitely you definitely have to fly this drone i'm kind of like marcus and ron and of course bill's on that Zeno, but you, you you know it's it's not as stable but it is definitely fun to fly and it kind of like I, I think we talked a little bit I, it's kind of like I, like i said it's kind of between addy and gps mode at, especially a takeoff now once you're up in the you know, once you're up, you know, as they say, you get in trouble, you know, go up. So, but yeah, when you're, I'm kind of in a tight spot here where it's kind of like Bill. And, uh, I mean, I'm taking off between two big oak trees and, you know, I'm flying <laughs> two wires. And so once I get up about, a, you know, 90 feet or so, 100, I'm, I'm pretty safe. But I'm definitely, uh, you know, when you first take it up, it, it, it definitely moves around a little bit. Hey, we got an update. Maybe a John Adrone says the uh, he said, LL, the QC guy, Chris, just dropped a video about sensors. So, uh, maybe we can uh, learn something from, from that video on the sensors. Yeah, maybe so. Well, you know, that's that's it. I, I mean, all I, all I do is, uh, you know, we talk about our, our experiences with the drone, so uh, you know, uh. What what we did is is real, you know. Like I said, Greg Pittman said his flipped over. Uh, Johnny, yours yours 
uh, flipped over on you, right? Or came close yeah, to it? Yeah, it did. So, well, yeah, it, yeah, so. yeah, it did. I mean, I had a hairy, I had a hairy moment there in the first landing. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, uh, I know Stephen Klein is accusing me of not uh, 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 doing all the calibrations, and I'm saying that I did. So, I don't know if he's calling me a liar or what, but uh, but I'm saying this is real because. There's evidence of it in here. People are oh, people are doing absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. No. It. 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 I mean, listen. I, I'm not a, no expert. I, I'm like I told you. I'm just a hobbyist. But you know, I never, never even. I've never even had a. I hate. I mean, I'm. I'm great that I've never had a, a even a close problem with any other drone. But this definitely was a little wild on the landing. But hey, tonight maybe with the firm firmware update and everything calibrated right, it, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um so what what's your um you know uh jo johnny has a unique perspective because he he's never flown anything but a dji drone for you know kind of like bell bell you well you you've had a couple toy drones but this is your first real gps yeah. uh uh decent quality to a gray drone right oh yeah i mean yeah. i had a uh, i you know my, my first drone was a um a 10 lx star premium i mean it really it's the orange pumpkin as everybody called it um <laughs> And it was a lot. It was a oh yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was a lot like the Phantom, but um, but yeah, with this, with the you know the, the here for for me, here's my synopsis so far. And I just put out a video about my first full flight. I'd like for you guys to watch it. But you know, one of the things that I have to say is this: the time after you get it up thirty feet up in the air and you get up to altitude and you fly. Okay, yeah, I had the crabbing, but you know, other than that, I really. It was it was it was a stable drone. Uh, th there was no issues with that. The quality of the video I thought was outstanding, especially for what you're the, the bang for your buck that you're getting for this. I mean, really, a 4K drone at this kind of price is, is, is crazy awesome. And you know, and, and even the maneuverability while I was up there, okay, I had no problems with the sticks and you know turning it around and you know bringing it back home and um, you know applying throttle to it. You know, I did see a little bit of props in the video but you know that's to be expected i mean you know see that on the phantom 4 pro i mean you know a 1500 dollars drone so i mean you you expect to see some of those things but for me okay where i think the xeno has been shining for me so far in my, in my first few flights is from the time i get it above 30 feet and i'm taking my flight till the time that i get to land it okay and it's you know it's like ron said you get under that 30 foot 20 foot threshold you know it's it's like it's like you better have your hand on both those sticks and your eyes on that drone. Yep, yep. Well, this, well, the, the Zeno One Bill is far different than the Zeno Two, and I wouldn't uh, expect it to to, uh, to to be anything like the the Zeno Two. The Zeno One, you know, we knew it didn't have those sensors. Uh, all it had is GPS and and. Uh, uh, you know that that was essentially all that was telling it where where it was at in space. And I thought Hubson did a freaking fantastic job of getting that drone and refining it to where, for what it is, it's actually relatively stable now and uh, and and flies pretty darn good. Uh, so I think we can expect that same thing uh, on the on the Zeno two. They'll continue to uh, 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 improve the drone. Uh, and 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 well, some of these things that we're talking about now, uh, we just won't even exist uh, later on down the road. Hey, Marcus, maybe we we got a different version for three ninety nine. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a great point. Uh, understand that you know we paid four hundred bucks for this drone, and to expect it to be like like uh, you know my a Mac two, I, I that's not my expectation at all. Yeah, maybe maybe when Bill gets his, he he'll, you know he'll have different. Uh, he won't need to join the profit a month club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a great drone for the price. I mean, you know, I haven't really even got into what all it can do, but it's definitely. I mean, you know, it was worth the wait. I know I had my hand on that cancel button many times, and I, you know, it's like, but hey, I'm glad I hung in there. It's it's going to be fun. I, I think it's you know for the the technology in that drone is. Yeah, you know, and all the drones. I mean, the Mavic Mini, the the Zeno Two, the stuff that's coming out now is just incredible for the price. I mean, well, you know, I I have to say this. You know, I I think everybody needs to, you know, and, and now I'm getting indoctrinated into Zeno Nation, and 
you know, really getting my feet wet. I think everybody needs to, you know, divert from, um, you know, just having all DJ like Johnny did. Okay. And I think from what we're hearing from, him, he loves it. Okay. And, and I'm loving my experience so far with it too. You know, it's like, you know, you set expectations for something, okay? When you get a DJI product, you have a certain set of expectations. When you're getting a Hubson product like this, you have a certain set of expectations. And, you know, and and, and it's been, fortunately, I, I've been well-informed by both Marcus and Ron on this. So I fully knew what to expect when I got the Xeno One. And, and you know, and, and it hasn't disappointed me, okay? For what, for what it does, for what it's supposed to do, it hasn't disappointed me, and it's really going to prep me real well for when the Zeno Two hits hits my door. Yeah, apparently, Daniel uh, he said, "Watch my hover five foot off the ground." It was a rock, so um, he's not seeing the issues we had. So um, that's interesting. Yeah, Daniel says he's had pretty good luck with his, and and you watch his videos, and it looks pretty good. So yeah, now I, I do have to admit though that um, it, it could be location too. That the, where I landed on that wall, or whatever I flew a different location. It flew much better at that location than it did my normal location. So um, you know, the the location could have some effect on the um, on how it lands, takes off, hovers around too. Maybe I was around more unseen metal at the other location. Um, so that's something to take in consideration too. Uh, what do they say? Location, location, location. Marcus, right? Well, that's what, that's what Johnny says in real estate. That, that's yeah, right. absolutely. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I filmed my granddaughter tonight. She was on a little e-bike I have, a little electric bike. And I, I was about probably six or eight feet off the ground and kind of, you know, with her coming toward me, backing up. And it did really good. And that's after, that's before I knew that it was going to say landing. So, you know, that, that was definitely, it didn't, def, it didn't bounce quite around as much for sure, you know, tonight. So hey, maybe you know y'all. I can't wait for y'all to try. Y'all, y'all have to hear the landing voice. Yeah, I, I can't wait. Yeah, I, I know. I, you know, we, 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 Marcus and I both played with the uh, intelligent flight modes a little bit. Um, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm usually not big on that type of thing. I mean, I, I don't dislike them. I usually just like don't like to waste my whole battery, you know, just uh, did on those modes. But I mean, the uh, follow me works almost exactly like it did on the, um, the optical tracking. I'll say. Works almost exactly like it did in the Xeno One, and the Orbit works almost exactly like it did on the um, Xeno One, which is to say, well, would you concur with that, Marcus? Yeah, yeah. No, I discovered something today, Ron. I, I. Uh, oh, we love discoveries. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you know, on the follow me mode on the original Xeno, uh, they updated it recently, where it would follow you with GPS. In other words. It would compare the GPS with your mobile device with the GPS on your drone, and and it and it would follow you without you having to draw that square, that optical square. Uh, but it would also do it that other way too. It would do the optical follow me. Now the problem with the GPS version of it was it didn't always keep you in center of frame. The drone would follow you around pretty good, but you had to be adjusting the yaw to stay in center of frame. Uh, now I noticed on the Dino too. They they did not. It does not have that GPS follow me. It just has the uh, the optical follow me where you draw the square. I tried it today too, Ron, and it worked very very well. John, have you tried any of the intelligent flight modes yet? I, I just did the uh, you know the, the circle around. I guess the hover. The orbit. I haven't I haven't tried to follow me mode anything. I, I'm kind of in a tight squeeze here so I, I really haven't tried that yet i'll wait till i get out in some open spots you know and try some of those intelligent flight modes right hey hey l let me talk about the orbit for just a second because there's some things that hubson does really good with uh orbit that you cannot do with your mavic mini uh the you can with your xeno you can set your controller as the center of the orbit or you can fly over the top of a point of interest set that as the center back off from it and it will orbit around that that's handy is if you're flying out someplace and you know some kind of a landmark or something you're wanting to get a good arc video around you can do that with that orbit mode uh on the xeno and uh and and you can that just doesn't work with the with the little mavic mini uh the mavic mini kind of goes to the when you try and do that so 
Yeah, pretty impressive that the uh, that the Xeno One and Two have better um, intelligent flight modes than the um, Mavic Mini. Would that is that fair to say, Marcus? Oh yeah, no. Well, they're, they're different. So I mean, it's it's kind of apples and oranges. Okay, okay. So it's not fair. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I want to I, see. We we got parts to text Josh in the chat here, and I want to ask uh, Josh how his field day out with uh, Brian Singleton went yesterday out there in Pittsburgh, and also did Brian Singleton get to look at the Zemo two? And if he did, what, what did he think of it? And and I got something for Bill here, real fast. Uh, John and Jones asked about Lauren's. A Facebook group, the Drones for Good. Um, do you feel comfortable enough to talk about that to promote Lauren Slate for a couple of minutes? I mean, I yeah. don't thought if you don't, you know. Yeah, Lauren, um, Lauren Donna, or and you see him on Rotor Talk Live. He's been on a lot more. He's almost like a um, uh, another co-host uh, with Ron and Marcus. Um, he's uh, started a dro- uh, a group called International Drones for Good, and um, you know, it's to uh, promote you know the whole thing. Um, about dr- the good the drones do. Um, you know, Romeo Dercher from DJI is fully on board with that. He's the, um, um, for lack of a better term, you know, he's involved with first responders and public safety and, and everything. And uh, it's made a, you know, it, it, it's, it's really starting to make some waves. And I think, you know, it's good to find something here that we all have some common ground on. You know, when you see... Uh, a drone finding, um, let's say, um, you know, a, a patient suffering from dementia loss, um, you know, finding, uh, you know, there was ones finding dogs, okay? And how many people have been saved? At last count, I think it was well over 300 people have been saved by drones. It's like, um, you know, so, you know, it, it really, they are amazing pieces of technology, you know, and, you know, forgive me if I digress here for a little bit, you know, but um, DJI used drones over in China for COVID-19 for spraying disinfectant. Um, you know, it, it really has just, you know, incredible capabilities and, you know, it will help, help with first responders, uh, in, in just, you know, in, in just for us, you know, the, the pure enjoyment out of, you know, looking at some of the scenery that a lot of people are able to shoot around the world is just phenomenal. So it's a great group. Um, I have the link is in my last week's show. Um, it's called, I think it's called International Drones for Good. Um, Lauren, if you're if you're there, uh, you know, uh, you probably send me the link and I can post it. But um, but it, it's a fantastic group. Um, you know, there's a lot of good people in it. You know, Romeo Dersher is is fully on board with this. Um, you know, and I would definitely want to want to join something like that if you want to find out. The good the drones are doing around the world, not just in your corner of the world. You want to join this group? It's on Facebook. Hey, uh, Bill, while I have you uh, talking here, uh, uh, what what's the agenda for the Bill the Drone Reviewer Show tomorrow at eight p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time? Um, That's a good question, Ron. Well, we're going to talk about we're going to we're going to continue the Zeno Two discussion tomorrow night. Okay. Obviously, that's 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 a hot and heavy, hot and heavy uh, topic on that. We're going to talk about those of us who have our Zeno twos, those of us that don't have our Zeno twos, and where they might be. Um, you know, we're also going to talk about you know, um, you know, th- this whole thing about the new DJI Mavic. Um, I wanted to spend some more time talking about that because I think you know April is is coming up. It's it's fast approaching, and you know. One of the things that I want to emphasize and not to digress at all, but, you know, it's heavy on our minds with everything that the, the COVID-19 situation is going on in every corner of the globe right now. OK, and I think shows like Ron, Ron and Marcus's, my show and talking about drones, it helps relieve us and get us out and provide some escape for us. So, you know, that's one good thing. And this is something to look forward to coming in April uh, or May, which is right around the corner, you know, this new DJI uh, Mavic drone, that, you know, for lack of a better term, that's or Mavic is what it's going to be called. So we'll spend some time talking about that tomorrow night. So I'm looking forward to that. Thanks. Great promo, Bill. And while I'm promoing um, Wednesday night at uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, uh, Bill Thomas has a Coast to Coast Drones Drone Therapy Show on, and we're going to have an East Coast versus West Coast Droners on, so it, it should be an interesting show. And right after 
Build a drone reviewer tomorrow night. Uh, Fill your drone life, Mike, and I will be gone live for an hour of uh, drone talk. And um, next, every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right before Zeno Nation, uh, the Grumpy Vlogger goes live with his show. He had Mel on tonight, his regular co-host guest, and they had Arco Drones on tonight, too, for a few minutes. It was some sound issues, but great show, so make make sure you stop by there. And, of course, don't forget Ken Heron on uh Thursday. So I think I pumped uh, most people in the drone universe here. So uh, we're about, you know, 55 minutes of the show. Um, is there any final thoughts from anybody in the panel on the Zeno 2 or anything else tonight? I just posted that link for the group and it's called Drones for Good International. Thank you, Bob. I'm going to get, get up on the screen here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I guess what I'll say, Ron, my final thoughts are I am, I am so flipping excited about the Zeno 2 and uh, I'm going to be flying it a, a lot along with the, uh, and you know, I just, I just, I like the original Zeno. So I guess I'm predisposed to like this one too. I had a great time flying it today. Uh, you know, any other issues aside. So uh, yeah, we're going to, we're going to have a lot of fun with this drone folks. Johnny, any final thoughts on uh, anything we said tonight or the Zeno 2 or? No, I just thank y'all for having me. And listen, yeah, the Zeno 2, just like Morris said, I, I think it's a great drone. And I, I'm just new, kind of new at the, the hobby. But, yes, for the price, for what it does, and and, and I, I think it's going to be fine. It'll, I'm sure they'll tweak it a little bit. But, yes, it's great. I mean, it's fast. It's super fast. Uh, I can't afford to, you know, hey, have a fast car, but I have a fast drone, I can tell you that. <laughs> so, but, no, it's, it's great. And I think when y'all hear that voice, Tonight or tomorrow, when y'all try y'all Jones, y'all gonna love it even more. I'm gonna be listening for it. <laughs> no. You'll no. hear. For, for me, I, I want to thank thank Ron and Marcus once again for 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 being what it seems like a semi regular on the show. I, I enjoy I enjoy I enjoy talking about drones. I, I absolutely enjoy it. Johnny, you were fantastic. It was great to have you with uh, with us on here tonight, and you know the excitement's building for you know. And it's great, and I'm kind of living vicariously through all three of you right now with your drone Zeno 2 adventures. So un until mine hits my doorstep, probably at the end of the week, and then on a more serious note, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with all those affected by by this COVID-19 virus. You know, it's 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 a pandemic. It's across the globe. Um, companies are are making changes. Uh, my company's making changes. Um, you know, the way we do things and, you know, the way we do things is going to be disrupted for some time. And, you know, we need to be patient. Um, you know, we need to follow, um, proper, um, you know, clean, clean, cleaning instructions, practice social distancing and, and you know what, and also while you're still at it, you can still be kind to your neighbor. Okay. Mr. Rogers had a great thing when he said, you know, he said his three world were his three rules in life were. Be kind to your neighbor. Be kind to your neighbor. Be kind to your neighbor. Okay, and that's what we need to do. We need to we need to remember that in this instance. Ron, good thoughts, Bill. And uh, you know, um, I want to say prayers for everybody out there. You know, uh, you know, with the uh, the uh, coronavirus, and uh, everybody stay safe. Especially like we have our friend uh, Sean Matthews over there in Spain. They're under total lockdown, where they can only go out for uh, food and medicine and so on. So, um, you know, there's a lot of people all over the world dealing with this and, uh, and prayers to everybody that stays safe from it. And uh, I don't know, if, uh, I, since I said, I don't want to say prayers again for Bill's drone to arrive, but uh, I wish good luck on Bill's, um, you know, uh, Zeno 2 arriving by, would you say the end of the week? Yeah, it should be the end of the week as well. Yeah, I, I want to see, I want to see, I want to see the Zeno 2 flying over the lake this weekend, uh, hopefully. I'm hope I'm real hopeful of that. As long as the weather cooperates, that bird's going up in the air. There you go. And uh, you know, I, I, Marcus and I were talking. I, I guess today or yesterday, and we and we both had big regrets not having that extra battery because we went cheap and bought the three nine nine kit or whatever. Because uh, you know, it's so fun to fly. You know, once you get down, you kind of want to go back up again. I'm sure, Johnny, did you just get one battery too? One. Yeah, so you know the feeling. You want to go up for that second flight, but you're looking around. You can't find that second battery any place. So, um, you know. Got to grab the mini. Yeah, yeah, I know. Mark, we got so many other drones. I just pull another drone out. But um, but my point is it's fun to fly. 
And, uh, you know, for all the stuff we said negative, we're not being negative about it at all. You know, you get it. It's fun to fly. Uh, uh, and and unlike the Xeno 1, I really feel like the video and pictures I get to this that I can really use for more than just drone reviews. I, again, I, I you know, the Xeno 1, I mean, I, you know, of course, I have a ton of video up on it, but I really didn't use it to make my other videos that really aren't drone videos, but this Z2, the camera's good enough that I can make a, you know, like a video about going to Wild Woods, the Jersey Boardwalk. That's not really, a, it has a drone taking video in it, but the video is not about the drone per se. You know, and in that case, I would always use something like my DJI drones or maybe a Navi, but now maybe, you know, the Z2 could make that type of trip because it can, you know, the quality is there to put it in a, um, you know, a non-drone review type of video. If that, if that makes any sense, it's long-winded uh, thing. And just the bottom line is, I like it. It's, I think it's definitely worth three ninety-nine. Is as good as the DJI drone, probably not. If you want the best, get get a Mavic or something like that. But if you want a a, a, a bargain drone that really can fly well, especially at high altitude, and can do good video and pictures, you may want to consider this. Well so, said, Rod. I want to thank everybody well, in the panel, panel tonight. We had a great discussion. I want to thank Johnny for coming on for the first time. I thought he contributed a lot to the show, and you know maybe we'll have him back again if he wants to, if he can put up with us guys again. And thank um, you, thank you. And I, I, I want to thank everybody in the chat tonight. We had you know great. We have a lot of our regulars. I'm going to call it our Zeno Nation superheroes in the chat tonight, and uh, a lot of great comments. And I mean, I say questions. A comments to help correct us on a lot of issues we're putting in the chat tonight and that's what we want if we say if we misspeak or say anything wrong call us out in the chat correct us or whatever we don't we're not trying to lead anybody down the wrong path here so um everybody again you know if, if you haven't got your Zeno 2 yet let us know and uh, you know uh maybe bill can put a call into his contacts or whatever uh, uh for you or something you know, but uh, seriously, I hope any everybody that pre-ordered the gear, the gear best pre-order has received theirs now. If they haven't, you know, let us know if you still if you pre-ordered before whatever the first year and you still haven't got it yet. You know, let us hear about it. Maybe we can ran a little bit on here. Maybe somebody from Gear Best or wonder by and say we better get that guy's drone out to him. So um, we rambled on here. So good night, and uh, you know, we'll see you next Monday, and hopefully, we'll have some. Uh, Updates on the Zeno 2, and hopefully another person's paddle will have their Zeno 2 on set next week. <laughs> let's hope. Yeah, let's hope. Absolutely. Yeah, let's hope, Bill. Absolutely. Good night, everyone. Good night. See you next week.